What's the one with the spinning thing? Huh? The spinning thing. Roulette. Oh, in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone, and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Real quick, before questions, we wanted to send a shout out to Ross Biedman, who you might recognize from Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith as Soar's Bandeem. Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? Ross is raising money for Make-A-Wish UK, and to help him do that, we set up an interview, so that's going to be coming out tomorrow. I had a fun little chat with him. Uh, that video will be out tomorrow, but we wanted to play a little video that he made just to talk about what he's doing to raise money and what we can look forward to from him in the next week. Hello there. My name's Ross, and I played the young Ling in Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. He goes up to Anakin and meets his demise. Here to announce that I'm having my first ever charity MMA fight for Make a Wish UK. Over the last eight weeks, I've been practically training non stop, getting into the best shape of my life, all to raise funds for this amazing charity that does great work for seriously ill children all across the UK. And to do this, I've set up a Just Given link on my profile on Instagram and on TikTok. All you need to do if you want to donate directly is follow that link and donate. And I've also been selling customized autographs to those who want one www.sourceautos.com or if you'd like to get one from my socials all you need to do is message me there and part of the proceeds will go to the very same charity let's raise a hell of a lot of money and kick some ass may the force be with you all bye bye for our first question Elo Asti wants to know if we're bummed that Kevin Feige's movie isn't happening I mean I'm always like a little bit sad just to know that there was a Star Wars project and now there's not a Star Wars project. But when that news came out earlier this week, I was not surprised at all. So I wouldn't really say that I'm that broken up about it. <laughs> to be honest, I had forgotten that that was even announced. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was it was announced like on the Star Wars show back in like 2019. Uh, but it was very vague even back then. And so because we hadn't heard about it in a very long time, I just figured it probably wasn't happening. They've said different things about it, because you're right, it was like officially stated, if I'm remembering correctly, on the Star Wars show. But then Kathleen Kennedy at one point said that like that never really fully formed. And so I'm wondering if that was just a, a push by Disney to say like, hey, we're kind of like joining our studios in a way and uh, having Kevin, Kevin Feige do a project and everything. But he seems like he's got his hands full with Marvel. I mean, even if, like, there, there's just a lot, that Variety article about Marvel came out. And even without that, I mean, the whole MCU is a big thing to wrangle and manage. So I just don't, I was wondering how he would have the time to do a Star Wars movie in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, a couple years ago, every IP was like, hey, Feige, do you want to do a movie with us? And he was like, yeah, maybe, if I have time. But since then, you know, uh, Bob Iger has come out and talked about, like, just this big whole restructure of what they want to do with films and TV, and they're kind of scaling some of that stuff back a little bit. So it makes sense that something like that, that never was that developed in the first place, would be cast aside yeah. for now. Yeah, and, and we have no idea what it would have been i'm fine to and, and even the three that they talked about at star wars celebration i'm still like I'm, I'm gonna wait here until like one of them is actively in production or something until <laughs> because we've had so many projects get uh, announced and then they just fall through and i think i i hope that they learn their lesson and i'm talking about disney more than anything i feel like just wants to announce things early and then since that kept happening things kept falling through now we're at a point where maybe they're like these three projects we're very confident in mm -hmm. and so they announced them at celebration so my fingers are crossed for that but yeah the whole feige thing i was like yeah i kind of figured that it wasn't happening anyway fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me right 
That is correct. Yes. I was wondering if you were going to George W. Bush it. <laughs> what is? What did he say? I, I don't remember. I he messed it up. <laughs> <laughs> or Mappa wants to know what our favorite new episode of Young Jedi Adventures was. Yeah, you, you wore your shirt and everything. I wore my nub shirt last week, so <laughs> I, I felt like I couldn't redo my nub shirt, but whatever. Uh, my favorite new one was the first of the new bunch, the Charhound Chase. Um, I loved Bell in that episode specifically. I really did like that episode too. Uh, I, I, I loved having Bell be like a mentor for kai mm-hmm. and kai being just so like starry-eyed about like bell zetafar oh my gosh like i want to be a padawan just like you where we're used to seeing bell in the padawan position and to see him as a bit of a teacher and to see him straight up doing the exact same things that Loden would have to do for him uh specifically falling from a great height and bell would panic and not be able to catch himself and Loden's like i got you mm-hmm. and Bell having to do that for Kai, I was like, that's so nice. And right now my headcanon, until proven otherwise, is that Bell takes on Kai as his Padawan when all of this is over. I want that to happen. I, I also want that to happen. Uh, didn't Kevin Scott get to write that episode? He did. That's... Which makes sense why Bell and Loden and, and, and Ember all felt like just perfect. Yeah, I I loved that. That was like a perfect way to start the new release of episodes for for all that and to just really toss some familiar high republic stuff our way which was great and just as fans of the books and the comics seeing the characters walking and moving and breathing and seeing like starlight beacon in a later episode having ships flying in and out of it just little things like that i was like this is so cool to see it yeah kind of realized in this way it's so rewarding to for book readers to be able to see a character like Belle interact with the other characters in the show, because we know Belle, and he's such a great character in the books. And especially, like, to have Kai, uh, to for Kai to be able to look up to someone and have a role model that looks like him is really, really important. And the two of them just, like, hit it off immediately, and it was adorable. They were the best together. So, yeah. That I, I okay, I talked at length about my favorite because I was just so excited about it. That's a really good one. Um, one of the other episodes that I loved was I for, I forget what it was called, but it's when Tabor, the the like little kid villain with the helmet on, he gets captured by p- other pirates, and so like the other uh, bad guys have to like work together with the Jedi. To save him. And I, I love that dynamic of like villains getting out villained and just being able to see the the little villain kids have to do the right thing, you know, and it was a it was especially fun to see the the Jedi be like, Yeah, I guess we'll help. I guess that's the right thing to do here. Was yeah, the the villains poured in that droid were going around asking the citizens of Tanu to help and they were like, What are you talking about? You've been nothing but a problem to us. No, we won't help you. And then when they saw the Jedi and they were like, Well, Jedi help everyone, right? They'll help us, maybe. And yes, seeing like Kai and Liss and Nubs be like <sighs> Fine, it's the Jedi <laughs> thing to do, I suppose. But then they very quickly were like, let's do it. They're they're too pure at heart at this point in their lives to have grudges. I think so. y- you said something like, mm, that, that sounds like not my problem, as, as if that were going to be the lesson <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of the episode. <laughs> that and sounds like a you problem. So- it sounds like an episode you needed to watch, yeah. really. So. <laughs> Probably. I also just want to throw out two other moments as a big High Republic book fan, but having two members of the Nile as enemies in the An Adventure with Yoda episode. I was not expecting to see that, so that was fun. Uh, Seeing them at a point where they're more just like a nuisance that the Jedi are vaguely aware of, and they haven't, you know, started setting Starlight Beacon on fire. But also, I mentioned Starlight Beacon, but Astala Maru, seeing another character uh, from the books and comics get to speak and walk and talk was really great. We're going to talk about Life Day in a little bit, but I also really enjoyed the Life Day episode. Gotta love Wookiees. And yeah, anytime we can see 
Yoda getting along with the Wookiees and you think about that line Yoda says like good relations with the Wookiees I have we're like Yay. yeah it's like for hundreds of years you've been going to their life day parties mm -hmm. I also just appreciate that there were like two spooky episodes uh, a very clear Thanksgiving episode with like a harvest feast and the life day episode so like this was just the we're gonna catch all of the major holidays here at the end of the year mm -hmm. <laughs> in, in this batch of episodes Cyrus wants to know what authors we hope to see return to Star Wars. Yeah, uh, this is inspired by John Jackson Miller coming back to write The Living Force, uh, who has written some canon books, but so many of the Legends authors have not like come back. We've had Timothy Zahn, James Lucino. Uh, so my pick would be Michael Stackpole as a big X-Wing fan. Uh, I was a fan of those books. So Michael Stackpole would be awesome to have back. I was really hoping he'd write like the Rogue Squadron tie-in novel, which maybe that project will see the light of day eventually. We'll we'll see. I didn't read Legends books, so I, I don't really have a good pick for this. So I'll just go with one that has done several books, and I, and I hope she continues to do more Star Wars books, and that's Delilah Dawson. Yeah. Every, she had one this year, though. So. Everything she writes, I love. So <laughs> I just don't want her to stop. Please yeah. don't stop. Uh, I'm trying to think of other possibilities. Oh, Drew Kropishian. I really like his writing. Uh, he wrote the Darth Bane trilogy. Um, so yeah, I think those, those would be my two picks. I'm trying to think of someone else. James Lucino? Uh, I, I, he's, that's true. He hasn't written one in a while and I do love his writing. I, I was trying to think of someone legends who hasn't written anything in canon yet at all, or someone that wrote like an early canon book that we haven't seen more of. Alexander Freed is another one that I would welcome back. I loved the Alphabet Squadron books, but you know that wasn't that far off. I'm also going to mention Emma Candon, who wrote the Ronin novel, which it wasn't canon. It doesn't make it any less cool, but I think it would be fun to see her tackle something within like the main universe. Lennon X asks if people shared memes over the Holonet in Star Wars. I can't decide if this is like one of those things that doesn't happen in Star Wars, like apparently uh, digital payments. You don't really see it. Han apparently had to take those physical credits and give them to Jabba. He couldn't just PayPal Jabba. Uh, it's because there's there's slicers around and, right. and you might get hacked. But I like the idea that memes would exist because I like the idea that Anakin would send them to Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan would be like, I don't get this, Anakin. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, memes, it depends on how you define a meme, because we've seen kind of like a lot of propaganda posters. Like, uh, I'm thinking of just in Pyloon Saloon alone, if you look around on the walls, there's just a bunch of random stuff up there. And like, if someone were to do like a, a comedic, like silly kind of propaganda poster. Does that count as a meme? I think it could. It, it more has to take on like a life of its own within a community. So if a poster came out and then people, like if Sabine then started to mm. riff on it and then people kept on riffing on that, I, I think that there's definitely potential for it and there's probably cool hit places on the hollow net <laughs> yeah. where they would get shared around. I think like if Sabine ever made a funny painting or drawing of like stormtroopers being dumb. Uh -huh. I think that could count as a meme if it got shared around and people had to be like hush hush about it because you didn't want to get in trouble. I, I can just see some characters like Anakin or maybe Wrecker or someone that wants to keep up with memes and sends it to everyone else. And tech <laughs> is like, I don't understand this Wrecker, not at all. <laughs> Where we have a friend who like tries to keep up with the young people memes. And then when he sends them to me, I'm like, Matt, I don't understand what this is. <laughs> like, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> please stop. I'm too old for this. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. As YouTubers, Molly and I have a crazy and often unpredictable schedule. In the past, that's made it difficult to find time to cook and eat healthy. HelloFresh has been a huge help for us. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. 
You get over 40 recipes to choose from every week to fit your taste, which keeps meals exciting. There's always something delicious to discover. We've stepped up our cooking and tried all kinds of dishes we wouldn't have without HelloFresh. They make home-cooked dinners doable with quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery, and with everything pre-portioned, it makes cooking a no-brainer. We are genuinely going to cook a 15-minute meal right after this stream. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50StarWars and use code 50StarWars for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50StarWars and use code 50StarWars for 50% off plus free shipping. Dina Fox wants to know what our life day plans are. Bring it in. Bring in the little orb. <laughs> and we got, we'll probably have to get some more life day merchandise, which we just appear to be collecting every year now. Uh, I, I think that I might watch that life day episode again. I like that there's a animated Wookiee Star Wars special. Yeah. Um, but a lot of it's just stuff that we do with friends. Um, we've got our Friendsgiving celebration coming up, Thanksgiving, which we'll probably just cook a bunch of food for ourselves. Uh, we're going to Asheville on a little vacation, which is like three hours from us. And then our friends have like a winter cabin that we all go to every year just to hang out for a weekend. And then we got Christmas and New Year's and yeah. I'm just encompassing life day as like Thanksgiving to the end of the year. It's just just the, holidays. the holiday season. Yeah. I mean, the, the closest thing to the actual date, I guess, would be Friendsgiving, which we started doing a long, long time ago, and then it got popular, and like a lot of people do it now, so we just like get together with our friends, everybody brings a dish, it's like a big pot potluck dinner kind of thing. Sometimes I get like a little bit old man yells at Cloud about it, where it was like, we started doing this in 2008. Uh, I'm sure we weren't the first people to do it, but now Friendsgiving is mainstream. Yeah. And I, like, I should be celebrating that all of these friend, groups of friends, this found family across the country are like gathering to eat food and stuff. But there's a little bit of the dark side in me where I'm like, it took our name. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't like an original idea, I don't think. I'm but, sure it wasn't. But we, when we did it for the first time, it was special because... Uh, we all gathered around the ping pong table. That was the biggest table we had pulled in, in my apartment. We pulled up the couch, pulled up everyone's office chairs, uh, and then whatever other random thing that was strong enough for someone to sit on. And that was like our dining room table. It was really fun. Very cobbled together, and we had a big old group. So, yeah, very fond memories of Friendsgiving. <laughs> Moving into YouTube questions, Revan6249 asks if we will see a Revan cameo in The Acolyte. I just had to pick that seeing a Revan fan asking. Like, I don't know <laughs> what about it. I was like, well, they clearly really want to know. Uh, and also, I do think that there's a chance for that. Uh, I think that if we're dealing with the Sith and that maybe they could have a holocron or something, because we're, we're well after the time of Revan, but... I think that would be a really fun way to have multiple Sith cameos. And Revan's an easy one. It's a dude in a mask. Yeah. Yeah. I Part of me is like, uh, I don't know like how they would bring that character back in to storytelling because it's such a big character to a lot of people and like it's there's a big fan base. And I really quickly want to, I just said, it's a person in a mask, I should say. And that's something that I've always been adamant about is... Revan as a character is very particular to like how each person made them mm -hmm. and mine was a dude in a mask but like it it, it could be anyone it, it's spider-man <laughs> anyone can be behind the mask yeah. and so they just need a mask and a voice and they can still maintain that level of okay Revan existed but we don't know exactly who they were Revan transcends gender basically period. I mean and, and I think it's cool to preserve that mm -hmm. and to preserve that it could be your Revan <laughs> that was canon and maybe we'll never find out for sure. Which also, we've talked about this before, makes it a little more difficult to bring the character into canon and to bring that character back just because of that reason. Like it was kind of a blank slate according to how you wanted to play as Revan. Um, but Leslie Headland has talked a lot about being a big Legends fan, so if there's any project that Revan could pop up in, I think that would be great. I could see her 
having just like a collection of Sith holocrons and it could be a very fan servicey moment, but if it works for the story and provides some thematic purpose, it's like, yeah, if a character needs to go look for some old Sith uh, knowledge <laughs> and opens up a holocron, who knows who could be in it? They can make it work. Yeah. Sebastian O'Leary wants to know what live action characters we want to see in animation. I, I like the inverse of the question that we usually get of, you know, who from a book or animation do you want to see in live action? But yeah, there are also plenty of characters that we have only seen in live action. So uh, I feel like we could talk about this for hours, but who came to your mind first? I think it would be fun and funny to see Luthen <laughs> in animation with how serious uh -huh. and like grum grumbly grumpy he is. But then his alter ego is very like posh and you know flowery and like i would i would love to see an animated version of luthan and, and just what that looks like. like what what if i think we've discussed this before but he could be in the bad batch it's possible uh yeah that would be very funny only if the voice is the same though <laughs> you just reminded me of uh there was an episode of one of the like young Justice League shows something it was an animated Justice League show for kids and the Punisher was in it played by Ray Stevenson uh, in Punisher Warzone but like he came in and voiced the Punisher for that <laughs> and was like really intense and all mm -hmm. the other I guess that would have been a Marvel show wouldn't it anyway uh, all, all the young kid characters were like okay see you later like okay. they just didn't know what to do with him yeah i feel like luthan could really do something fun like that sure uh i mean there's too many to choose from but i mean i would i would go with my favorites like if we had big dark lighter it means that we'd probably be getting a cool like pilot show uh cob vanth i'll take anywhere keller and beck let's bring him back let's let's put him in tales of the jedi mm, yeah uh I mean, Grogu, obviously, but everyone would kind of groan and roll their eyes of like, oh, great, we're getting Grogu and everything now. Uh, I'm excited to maybe hopefully continue to see more book characters from the High Republic show up in Young Jedi Adventures. I will take that for as long as we can. Uh, Does that I, I count think as live action to I mean, animation? I guess not. Okay, here's one that's kind of iffy. Because technically it is like live action, but the Star Wars Jedi characters, it's like they're they're obviously computer animated, but they're also based off of their live action performers and they're it's pretty realistic. Yeah. So to see them in like a Clone Wars style, which might be more exaggerated, would be fun. Sure. Ooh, here's one I think that could be fun. Uh the Crimson Corsair, the the background pirate from the force awakens and he was in the rise of skywalker too but just like a pirate crew he's got kicks the last living clone with him mm. it would just be a fun like wacky adventure series that we could go on they would occasionally run into hondo and they'd be like Ugh, this guy again <laughs> that'd be good um just thinking of recent ones balin and shin sure could oh yeah they cool. could uh, balin could be in tales of the jedi yeah that would be really cool to see and get some more backstory for for Balin, and then the the night troopers, like mm. having them in animation would be lots of fun. That'd be real cool. Adam Star Wars fan asks how much we think we'll see the Peridia galaxy in future stories. Originally, I would have guessed probably not a whole lot until we got back to Ahsoka season two, but there has been a blurb going around about skeleton crew and the kids getting lost in a strange galaxy and we still don't know if that means just like oh we're in the big large strange galaxy for the first time away from home the galaxy just is strange to them right or it could mean like oh we're literally lost in a galaxy where like we have no clue what's going on and that could be the peridia galaxy or it could be some other new place i think it would be a little strange to introduce like yeah here's another one and just like this plethora of other galaxies, it's possible, but... Yeah, I don't think so. Because I, I feel like that would undermine the impact that it had in Ahsoka. Like, 
the fact that Thrawn was banished to another galaxy mm-hmm. and it was so hard to get home from there and get to get to there. I don't want to see too much of it then, like a back and forth of like other people getting sent there. That's true. And if that is part of the story of Skeleton Crew, it's going to be like, well, hold on, how? How did they get there? I mean, and I'm sure the show is going to tell us, but... Yeah, yeah, you're right. It doesn't want to be like, oh, it's just a hop skipping away now. <laughs> the pergola are going to be like, hold on now. <laughs> we I are not, tired. I'm not a taxi. Come on. So, yeah, I, I think that they probably will use it sparingly it, as far as like characters bouncing back and forth. But I could see just a, a new set of stories starting over there. I, I don't think they're going to do that a ton. I don't think we're going to say in a galaxy even farther away. It's yeah. like, I, I think the main galaxy will be the primary setting. Yeah. I don't want to see too much of it. And like we've been doing for the past couple months, we're going to round out our Q and a with one of our conversation cards from Kelly Knox. Let's see. This one is just the galaxy pod races, interplanetary travel games of chance, what would you do for fun in the Star Wars galaxy? Hmm. I mean, you know, I would want to say like pod racing or something like that, but if the video game is any indication, it would kill me pretty fast. <laughs> yeah. I would just, I'd be a rat's Tyrell on the wall. Just... Hmm. I don't know. I might like be a street food vendor at, at like in like Coruscant or something. I don't know if that's that's not as fun. fun. That's that's work. Well. I mean, it you'd meet a lot of interesting people. If you like making street food. Uh, I mean, just, just travel in general would be pretty great mm-hmm. to go to different planets and experience different cultures. We like to travel in the real world, so <laughs> it would be cool to go visit aliens and try all of their street vendor foods. Yeah. Gambling. Sure. I'd throw my hat into gambling. What would you gamble on? <laughs> Any of those things. Pod races. like Just chance cubes. Yeah. Red or blue? I mean, I guess that's like, uh, not craps. What's the one with the spinning thing? Huh? The spinning thing. Roulette. Oh, in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it exists other places, but in casinos, I see. Roulette is basically just like red or black or green, right? Yeah. Something like that. I'm, I know it's more complicated than that. I'm just... See, I'm not much of a gambler. I would probably just watch you throwing your money away. Be like, mm mm mm, <laughs> betting on the pod races. Uh, what was the race that we saw in Bad Batch where it was like? Oh yeah, the Mario the... Kart style. Yeah. Uh, what was that called? Like, uh, that was a little lower stakes, I think, than pod racing, right? Eh, people still crashed and stuff. But yeah, that was fun to watch. I wouldn't mind watching races. I just don't think I would bet on them. I bet there's some really good um, drag shows in Star Wars. Sure. I mean, Size Noodles probably would host something pretty cool. <laughs> Please give it to me. That's all the time we have for questions today. If you want to leave a question for next week's video, just put it in the comments below or sign up for Patreon to join our weekly Q&A discussion. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on X, Instagram, TikTok, Threads, and Blue Sky. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.